Now we're going to discuss how to zero the length sensor and set the M stops. The M stops are important for drilling, so we know to stop in the right position when doing rod changes. The first step is to log in at the level of SE, which stands for Service Engineer. In this case, this machine features USB security, so we need to use a USB stick to do that. Your password may be different. After logging in, we can see that the current user has been changed to SE. From here, we're going to navigate to settings, and we're going to make sure that the ruler is selected from up here. If it's not, now would be the time to select it. When setting the rotary head position and zeroing the length sensor, we want to make sure that the rotary head is moved all the way to the top of the feed beam, which we'll show in a moment. Once that's done, we're going to zero the sensor. When zeroing the length sensor, what we want to do is make sure that the hose drum and the rotary head have reached full mechanical stop in the upward position. That can be indicated here. That means they can't move anymore. The other thing you want to check if zeroing or having consistent problems is the length sensor, in this case D172, which is located right here, and has two small set screws inside as well as a rubber coupling. I would also inspect this cable for damage if having repeat issues. When setting the M1 setting, we want to make sure that the rotary head is in its frontmost position while drilling. However, we want it to be before it reaches mechanical stop, ever so slightly. To set it, we move the rotary head into that position, as is indicated on the screen, and as is shown in value form here. And then we want to place that value into the field there. We can do this by manually clicking and typing, or by simply pressing the arrow, which will copy the value from one field to the other. This needs to be done at level SE or higher in order to prevent operators from making unintended changes. When setting M1, the most important thing to remember is, is that we want to maximize the forward motion of the rotary head while drilling down. However, we do not want to make contact with the stopper here. So we want to set M1 relatively close to there, but it must be longer than M2, which we'll look at in a moment. When setting the M2 setting, we want to make sure that we are setting it higher than the M1 setting. It's advised to set M1 first to prevent the conflict. M2 is gone to after M1 has been reached during the drilling cycle. We are attracting to allow the drill bit to drop free of the hammer and to allow the breakout to occur. So in this case, we've moved the rotary head to that position. And again, to copy the value, we would take it from this value into that field. And we can do so by pressing the arrow. Let's go take a look at M2 on the machine. When setting the M2 stop, it is important to realize that M2 needs to be above M1 in relation, and also needs to be where the jaws can grip the sub-adapter without gripping the joint in the middle. When setting the M3 value, it's important to keep in mind that this is the point at which the rotary head will stop when coming down the feed beam to couple onto the next rod. It's also used by the automatic system. To set it, we move the rotary head to that defined position where the tip of the adapter is above the pin of the pipe that is clamped in the lower jaw, and then we set the value. I often do this after setting M2. I want the pipe to be in the M2 position and the rotary head to be free of it with a gap in between the pin and the adapter. Let's go take a look. When setting M3, as we discussed, it's important to make sure that there's enough distance between the pin, which is the male threads, and the adapter that we don't have any collisions when feeding forward. That is the primary function of the M3 stop. The M4 setting is indicated as when a pipe is in drill center and coupled to another pipe that is still in the hole. The lower joint in this point is between the two breakout jaws, the fixed and the swing jaw. This is a very important measurement and used by the automatic system as well as operators when running manually. Again, to zero the setting, we place the machine into that position, as indicated, and we select the arrow to teach the position. Let's go take a look at it on the machine. As we're showing the M4 position without another pipe being in the ground, just for demonstrative purposes, this still shows that we would like the pipe at drill center to be in the upper jaw, and what would be the pipe in the lower jaw to be in the fixed jaw. 
M5 is set as is indicated by the image here. When the bottom of the pipe being used to load back into the carousel is above or level with the bottom of the carousel floor. In order to teach that position, we would put the pipe into the correct position and then teach the location. Let's go look at it on the machine. I'm going to help visualize M5 by using a piece of flat steel here. So if we insert it across the top of the breakout table, below the pipe, we can see that there's a slight gap. And if we follow the piece of steel up, we'll notice it's flush with the floor. This means that when the pipe is transferred to the carousel, there'll be a slight gap. If this is set too high, it can cause collisions with the top of the carousel and can also lead to wear and tear on the carousel floor and assembly when the pipes are dropped as they rotate. So we want this to be as close to the floor as possible while still making sure that it can clear and with a slight room for error. M6 is used as the point at which a rod may be brought freely from the carousel to drill center or put from drill center back into the carousel. Let's go ahead and set the setting on this and then we'll go look at it on the machine. When setting M6, there are a few things we want to keep in mind. The first is, is that we have plenty of clearance between the pin of the pipe and the floating sub's adapter. The other thing we want to keep in mind is that we have enough clearance from the adapter to the uppermost plate of the carousel, especially if drilling horizontally is being used. If this is set too low, what can happen is, as pipes transfer out, they can make contact with the rotary head, causing either pipe droppages or unintended stoppages of the automatic system. M7 is set as indicated on the screen here. This is the point at which the pipe centralizer, or pipe guide, is allowed to close knowing that the hammer has passed through and is far enough down. We're not going to set that this time, as we don't have a hammer on this machine. M8 is set based on site conditions and the drill string in use. M8 is the point at which the hammer will stop retracting and will cease moving in the borehole when ending drilling. This is important in loose conditions. Sometimes we set this a bit longer so that the operator can manually finesse the hammer out of the hole when dealing with that loose gravel and overburden. When drilling in really competent rock, where we can bring the bit all the way to the surface without concern, we can set that a bit higher. That's set based on site conditions, so we won't set that here.